When you heard that this force that you've worked and seen and interacted with for 15 years is going to be taking the helm, what did you immediately think? I thought it was a brilliant move. Um, the platform needs a radical transformation. They need to have credibility with the marketplace, with brands, with consumers. And Linda has a track record around innovation, really putting consumers first. So I think it was a brilliant move for a platform that desperately needed change. And is it safety first? Is it innovation first? How does she manage to square that circle of a CTO who's going to want to be pushing ahead with innovation and perhaps running fast and breaking things? Look, on the, on the technology side, I mean, obviously, Elon's a visionary, and he'll be able to certainly figure out the path from Twitter to transform it to the super app X. Um, but you need to stabilize the business. I mean, right now, it's been bleeding advertisers. Um, no one wants to be on the platform. There's been all of this drama around it. And Linda is a stabilizing force. I mean, she spent over 10 years at NBC Universal, really stabilizing that company, growing it to over $13 billion in sales, um, leading their upfront, leading, you know, kind of innovation with data, uh, with other uh, TV networks, really trying to bring the community together. And she is a force to be reckoned with. I mean, there's a reason why they have her nickname being the Velvet Hammer, because she's able to negotiate with brands. She's tough. She's fair. But order you know, number one is really to bring brands back onto the platform. And to do that alongside an executive chair, of course, Ed. And I mean, you know a lot about the people that worked alongside Elon over the years. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting how it works. So at SpaceX, you have Gwyn Shotwell as the COO and president running things day to day at Tesla. Particularly in recent quarters, Zach Kirk on the CFO is like more visible and other executives like literally appearing on stage. So I guess, Stephen, to your mind, how do you see that working? You know, Linda, who you know, with Elon Musk day to day, do you think that she can get him to see reason or, or compromise? I think so. I mean, we saw a trial run of what their relationship is going to look like uh, about a month ago. Um, in uh, Miami, there was the possible conference, a big marketing event, uh, and she was on stage doing a fireside chat interview with Elon. And she didn't pull any punches. I mean, Linda's not a wallflower, right? I mean, she's very tough. She knows her business. Um, you know, she is a good New Yorker, grew up in Long Island, you know, Italian heritage. I mean, she's as tough as they come. And she asked him the tough questions on stage. And so you could see that she didn't shy away from asking him about, hey, why did Twitter cancel the client council that they had? Are you going to bring that back? Are you going to stop doing tweets at 3 in the morning? You know, that's not good for the platform. So I feel that she knows this space, she knows this industry, and she's beloved by brands and marketers and media agencies. And so if he's smart, he'll really give her the reins, let her be the CEO, let her build this platform, and then bring all the innovation to really help connect content, commerce, and community. We go back to it. How does she build this platform? You know, Elon sets out his ideas as CTO. Mm -hmm. Many of them we know about subscription-based service, yep. uh, algorithm, algorithmically addressing where things appear in the timeline. Then what impact is Linda going to have when she comes in? What ideas can she actually install? Well, first, it's about leadership. I mean, the company has, what, lost so many employees. They've obviously let a ton of people go. You know, they're a fraction of what they were before. I feel like there has been this crisis in confidence in Twitter, and here is a real leader who's going to come in and stabilize the business and bring back that confidence, bring back the trust of not just the employees, but also the advertising community. And you have to start there. I mean, at the end of the day, this has to be about getting the basics right. And she knows how to build a business. She is a leader. She is inspiring. She will bring talent to the company. I mean, she built a data business from scratch for NBCU. She understands e-commerce. She understands analytics. And so she had that full span of control on the business side. Again, you have incredible yeah. engineers and technologists over at uh, Twitter, certainly at the helm of Elon. But, you know, having her really lead the business side, that's what this company needs. It's interesting, of course, talking about the data lead, talking about ultimately how you show brands that you're making impact, the right impact for them, mm -hmm. converting into sales. But I'm also interested in the grander vision. Mm -hmm. Many people had to quickly Google or search or ChatGPT who Linda Yaccarino is. Right. But behind the scenes, she's a really has had a very powerful influence, had a very influential job. What vision do you think she mm -hmm. thinks Twitter has? ultimately is going to be to make this a worth her while kind of move yeah i mean look she was the chairwoman of nbc universal's ad sales business right she had a great job she was one of the most powerful people in media so for her to leave it had to be something really compelling it had to be a bigger vision and i think elon shared the vision for the super app for x 
And I feel that she got really excited about that. And so again, her ability to innovate, to bring consumers and brands along on this journey, that's a very unique position to be in. She understands content. She actually was a partner for Twitter for years. Think about the Olympics and the Super Bowl and World Cup, I mean, all those mega events that truly have global ramifications. She was at the center of that. So now to bring that lens around again, content, commerce, and community, everyone is trying to connect that. And as one of the largest media brands on the planet, she understood that an audience, whether it's 18 to 34, 18 to 49, whatever advertisers are looking for, they could find that right. audience anywhere. The reality I is mean, you have to make it compelling to put those dollars on Twitter.